Good morning, Frosttube. It is Sunday the 14th of July, 2024, and I'm so happy to be back sharing with you again today. If you're new here, I'm Sarah, and you're very welcome to my channel, So Me Sarah. This channel is all about cross stitch, sometimes some other needleworks, and little bits of random life information thrown in for good measure. Those of you who are coming back to me, um, again, as I've said before, uh, you know what you're in for, so it's your own fault. <laughs> no, seriously, thank you so much for being the backbone of the community here, for being, um, you know, for being what supports this channel. Otherwise, I'm just talking into a screen in my kitchen. It's so lovely to have a wonderful community here and I want to say thank you for all of your comments again, especially on the last video. Um, thank you for your lovely comments about Charlotte's ending of her primary four year at school. It was, it was good, it was a good ending and I'm so happy that we were able to share a little bit of that with you. Um, it touched my heart and I know that it touched several of yours, well, many, many of yours as well. So thank you so much for sharing that with me. Um, as you know, I tend to put little bits of family life in here at the beginning of my video. Most folks do their life updates at the end of their video so that you can just switch off. But you know, if that's not for you, then you can just skip ahead a few minutes um, and find the stitching. I'm not gonna be offended. Um, but I just wanted to let you know or let you see some of the photographs from my son's graduation. I mentioned last time that we were heading over to Durham. Durham is in the northeast of England and it's a medieval city. It's a very small city, very beautiful small city. And we headed there for Andrew's graduation. He graduated with a master's in physics and I'm so proud of him. We are both so very, very proud of him. We had an absolutely fabulous day with him and we were so blessed by Emma and her family who were able to take Charlotte for a couple of nights, which allowed us to go together. At one point in the year, we did think that we were going to have to choose just one of us to go. Um, but the godsends that, that Emma and her family are, they said, no, no, you must go. We will take care of Charlotte. So I'm so blessed to have them in our lives. Um, it's not easy to leave a child with special needs um, to someone else's care because she is extra. <laughs> So um, anyway, as I said, I'm very grateful to them for that. And it meant that Alan and I could go together and be proud parents with Andrew. So I'm inserting some pictures as I'm chatting. Durham University have their graduation ceremonies in Durham Cathedral. And Durham Cathedral is a medieval cathedral and it's absolutely gorgeous. So it was a fabulous backdrop to the day and um, I, I thought you guys would appreciate seeing that. It's also, it's on the top of a hill in Durham and at the top of the hill right beside it is Durham Castle. So there are photographs of a sort of the champagne reception where we're having a few drinks here uh, early in the morning, I might add. <laughs> um, but um, that, is, that is the grounds of the castle and the backdrop there is Durham Castle. The castle is owned by the university and some of the, the kids who are in one of the colleges, and I've forgotten which college it is, um, but one of the colleges at the university um, has its dorms and things there in the castle. So apparently it's very salubrious, but very cold. <laughs> so uh, needless to say, Andrew didn't stay in such a dorm, <laughs> but it was, as I said, a beautiful, beautiful backdrop to the day. And it was a very lovely day weather-wise. There was sunshine at the times when we needed to, it rained in the morning, but the sun came out when we were having a reception and it wasn't too warm, which meant that Andrew wasn't baked in his gowns and his suit. <laughs> um, and yeah, we just, we had a wonderful day. Andrew, um, after we had the reception and we'd met some of his friends, uh, he took us on a walking tour of Durham because it is the first time that we've both been there with him. I know he's finishing his time at university, but just the way our life is, we didn't get to visit with him very often. And he took us on a tour to show us 
where he worked in the physics building. They had a champagne reception at the physics building as well. We got to go into his lab and nod sagely, not having a clue at all about any of the things he was showing to us um, that were part of his master's project. We met the PhD student who was there working with him on the project and his project supervisor as well. So it was lovely just to see a little bit more of his world and understand it. And it was also just beautiful to be in Durham. It was, it's a beautiful city to walk in, really beautiful city. And then we celebrated with some cocktails by the river and we had a lovely evening meal. Um, we basically just did the good pottering that you do on a graduation day. And one of the loveliest things um, for me was that um, that the, the folks were allowed, the graduates, graduates were allowed to keep their robes until 6 p.m. So all day long wandering through the city and stopping at coffee shops or restaurants or cocktail bars or wherever we happen to be. Um, there were graduates walking around the city in their robes all day long and it just it made a really lovely special feeling to the day. So I wanted to show that with you. I know my, my bigger boy doesn't get as much airtime as Charlotte does here. He probably doesn't want it anyway. But we are proud parents and um, and I absolutely loved being able to celebrate his achievement with him. And I thought you might like to see some pics. So let's get on with our stitching now. Um, I don't have any FFOs, that's probably not a surprise at this, this stage in the year when there are so many starts happening. Um, but I do have three finishes to share with you. So that is exciting. I had started um, this one, the first one, is what I start and finish in the last in the time that I've seen you. So start number twenty nine at the beginning of July was a freebie from Plum Street Samplers called Adore Him. And this is my version of Adore Him. The only thing I left out of the chart was the date, which sort of sits either side of the tree trunk. I decided not to put the date on this. Um, I'd probably make this into some kind of flat ornament at some stage or maybe just a Christmas pillow. Um, I absolutely love the silk that this was stitched in. This was silk that was gifted to me by Maureen. Thank you so much, Maureen. This is an absolutely perfect green, in my opinion. I think that the variegation in it is superb. Unfortunately, I don't know what it's called because it was a a Vicky Clayton silk. Maureen very kindly gifted me a whole bundle of um, Vicky Clayton silk spools that she had been um, collecting. and uh, But they don't have names or numbers or anything on them. But this is a wonderful green and I really wanted it for this particular uh, little Christmas project. So this was also the start of my Christmas in July stitching, which I'm all here for. I love stitching Christmas any time of the year, but the whole Christmas in July thing is just a perfect validation <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. So as I said, this is a freebie um, from Plum Street Samplers. I will have the link down below if you are interested in it. I think this particular chart would look fabulous in so many different varieties of fabric choice and color, um, floss color, mixing colors, sparkling snowflakes, white snowflakes, I just think you can make this really look fantastic in lots and lots of different ways. I really enjoyed this little stitch and I'm happy to add it to my finishes for the year. It was, as I said, start number 29 for the year of 50 starts for hashtag fun for 50 Sal 2024. Um, that I'm doing with Sally at Flossy Sews and Grows. I'll talk a little bit more about the um, about that challenge uh, in, in a little bit when I talk about more new starts. But it was start number 29 and it fulfilled a prompt that was provided by Kathleen of Kathleen's Trodden Trails and by Rosa Moulton. Now you may recall, I've, I've told you about this prompt before, Kathleen and Rosa both suggested that Sally and I um, have starts this year that begin with the first letters of our names. So I need to have five starts beginning with S-A-R-A-H and Sally likewise S-A-L-L-Y. Anyway, this one 
is the second A of my name. So that's why I have chosen Adore Him. So I just have one left to do to complete Rosa and uh, Kathleen's challenge and, and that is coming, <laughs> that is coming. So I've, I like this challenge a lot, it's fun, it's really fun. So this is um, Adore Him by Plum Street Samplers. My next finish is something that I started in June. I'm just switching the board over here. Um, I started it in June and it is the Bluebird Sampler by Heart in Hand. A lovely gift from my friend Anne-Marie. And um, when Anne-Marie gifted it to me last year in um, at Stitch in London, I knew I was going to keep hold of it and include it in this year's starts. So it was a June start and I did really quite well in June, but uh, I managed to finish this up last night when I was on a Zoom call. Um, with across the pond, the across the pond stitch and chat, and that was fun. So I finished it, but I didn't finish it because I um, I laughed. I told them that I was going to try last night and um, count and talk and listen all at the same time, because normally I'll choose a fill in project for the Zoom calls, and I said I was going to try to count tonight, to, last night, to finish this one, and I did finish it. <laughs> just 10 minutes after the video call was done. And when I looked at it carefully, I had put the date up here. I have no idea. I counted the stitches properly. I just didn't count the spacing <laughs> correct at all. So that had to come out. <laughs> and I did that in a kind of a, a quick fix this morning. So technically it was finished this morning, um, but I love it. And I even got the little beads on. There are, I don't know if you can, how well you can see them, but there are some beads here. I can't see them on the camera really well at all. Um, they're here and up here, and then there's a few down over here. So there are probably about 10 beads altogether on this one. So not too many at all. So I really like this one, and again, I think I'll probably finish this as a pillow, but um, I might need to review all my finishes at the end of the year and just see what's what and what I actually want to do with them. But happy to have another finish and thank you so much, Anne-Marie, for the gift of this chart. My uh, third finish and the last one for today to share with you is the Caterpillar Cross Stitch Enchanted Realms Sal. The last part came out a couple of weeks ago and it was this little area here with the goblins in it or yeah, the goblins. So I have to say this was not my favorite area to stitch. Um, and I don't know why. Actually, I think it's because I find him a bit spooky. <laughs> And everything else is so cute, but that's just a me thing. So um, the rest of it is really lovely. I mean, she is beautiful. And this little gnome here is fine too. So this one is now finished and it's very fun. I think I will try to finish this one in a hoop because it's a really good circular shape. Um, and I think it was, you know, it was designed for a hoop. So I think I will finish it in a hoop for Charlotte. Uh, but we'll see. So that is three finishes, which I'm really pleased with because in all honesty, I didn't do huge amounts of stitching this <laughs> last couple of weeks. I had big plans and of course they went to the wall. I came back from Durham um, and I'm blaming the flight here, but I came back from Durham with a, an ear infection. I persevered for several days and um, then it crept right round into my eye and you know how it goes. Um, it still isn't gone and I have um, medication and all kinds, but it's really taking its time to shift, which affects my concentration ability. I'm sure you know what it's like if you've got a bad headache or anything and you really want to sit on this, the sofa and stitch and make yourself feel better, but your concentration is just shot to pieces. So, so there was lots that I had planned for the last few weeks of stitching that just didn't happen, but you know, that's life, isn't it? <laughs> so I did I did get bits and pieces done, just 
I had some time off last week, so I think I was hoping for a little bit more, that's all. Um, anyway, I did make some new starts for the Fun for 50 Sal 2024 that Sally and I are doing together. This is our challenge for our big 50th birthday year. And we are each starting 50 new starts. That is the plan. And we're making good progress. I have now um, 31 new starts and Sally has 32 new starts. At least she did yesterday when she posted a new video. I think it was yesterday or maybe Friday. And she posted a video reviewing her starts so far. So that's a really fun video. So I would recommend that you pop over to Sally's channel, say hi, and watch her show you her 32 starts so far, how, how far she's got with them. Some of them she's finished and they're just, they're beautiful. They're all really great starts. Um, so one of the things I noticed about Sally's starts is that she she doesn't have any that are like a tiny corner or a tiny bit of border started or something. Um, like me, she has tried to give it a bit of welly <laughs> so that we actually have a decent start on the projects, even though we quite quickly have to move on to do another start, you know, and another start because we are trying to are trying to make numbers this year but that's a really fun video so go and check Sally's video out um, and see where she's at with all of her 50 starts so far. Um, I had three new starts since I last saw you so I had two that were planned and one that was not. Oh I've forgotten to share a whip with you so just backtrack very very momentarily. <laughs> And I did have some progress on this whip, which is not part of my 50 starts. Um, this is the sampler that goes along with uh, Mrs. Parkman's Academy of Needlework online workshop, the free online workshop that Nicola Parkman is currently hosting on her channel, um, on her, her floss tube channel. So that is Nicola Parkman is the name of her channel. I think it's maybe Nicola Parkman of Hands Across the Sea, but Nicola Parkman is the main name on the channel. Um, Nicola started about six or seven weeks ago to um, post online stitch tutorials and they all relate to this little sampler. So this little sampler is free on her on the Hands Across the Sea website. You have to go through the purchasing um, process on the website, but there's no actual charge. So don't worry that you're gonna get charged, but you do have to go through and you do have to check out. And then you get the PDF of this little sampler. And it is exactly as a sampler should be. It's a stitch designed to help you practice and test your stitches. Nicola then has um, every week since then, she has a video that um, demonstrates a number of stitches, more stitches than actually are needed for the sampler. So, but perhaps stitches that are in the family of a stitch. So we have some herringbone stitches here. There are two different types in the sampler. Um, but when she talks about the herringbone stitch, she talks about lots of the variations of herringbone stitch and demonstrates a number of those. Um, they are fabulous, fabulous videos. Beautiful demonstration, perfect explanation, really, truly helpful. So if you're at all interested in learning a few new specialty stitches, then please go and watch this wonderful resource that is completely free to us, that Nicola has given her time um, and effort and energy for. And I also believe she said that she's working on another sampler um, on, you know, uh, charting, sorry, charting another sampler in which all of the stitches she's teaching will be very useful. So that's really exciting to see what's coming, what is the sampler that's coming. Um, I think we've seen some sneak peeks of it on her Instagram perhaps um, and that looks very promising. So I do love a little bit of embroidery um, and stitches other than cross stitch and it's so lovely to be learning um, to be learning from someone who really loves her craft and is passionate about her craft and passionate about bringing us along with her. So that is my long way of saying I did a little bit more progress 
on this. I am about four, three, yeah, I think I'm three weeks behind with yesterday's video release. I just got a little behind as I did with all sorts of things in June. But I'm catching up. I'm working across these cross-stitch um, alphabets. I just keep moving ahead with those and trying to stay ahead of the areas in which the specialty stitches come. So the last couple that I've done since I showed this to you last time are the tent stitch and the uh, blanket stitches. So that's, you can see those, the light isn't brilliant in here today. Sorry, folks. I think it's really worth going to watch the video in which um, she talks about tent stitch, in which Nicola demonstrates tent stitch, because I think we often use the term um, just to mean a half cross stitch, really. And that isn't technically what a tent stitch is. So I think it's useful to know what a true tent stitch is. Of course, in some cases, it doesn't really matter that you just do a half cross stitch, but perhaps in a more specialty piece, you might want to or need to um, perform the, or execute the tent stitch correctly in its technical term. So anyway, I will leave all of that to Nicola. She's much better explaining than me, but that is um, my progress on what I call Mrs. Parkman's ABC, but it's it's the, the little um, chart that goes along with, a little sampler chart that goes along with her online workshop. Okay, back to, <laughs> sorry about that diversion, but back to my new starts that I did for the uh, Fund for 50 Sal. 2024. So I had Adore Him, which you've seen, and I managed to get it finished. I then had, I then snuck in one, <laughs> which um, was Strawberry Season by Yasmin's Made With Love. I think I shared this with you last time that I was going to sneak it in. I hadn't really planned it, but I was going to sneak it in. So I made a little bit of a start on this. Um, it is just a little start, but um, I like it. <laughs> so this is a permanent linen called Country French Rain and it's really soft. I know that permanent linen has a, a reputation for being crispy and crunchy um, and I think some of their colours are but I've had several, um, there's a Country French Latte and a Country French Rain and I think perhaps because they're over dyed they are um, they're really quite soft. So it's lovely to work on and I love the soft blue color. I changed the color of the threads up a little bit um, just from the original, uh, the thread legend on the chart, just because of my fabric. My fabric could, I think, tend to pull the colors down a bit. It's slightly, it's a dull blue and I didn't want it to pull the colors or drain the colors that um, Yaz had suggested. So for this fabric, I thought it might be better to brighten brighten my colors up a little bit. But they're essentially the same colors, so where there's two reds, I have still got two reds, so just brightened them up a little bit. So that is um, Strawberry Seasons. I stitched this one in honor of Caroline um, from Everton. And Caroline was 50 on the 7th of July and I'm not I'm sharing information that she's already made public <laughs> um, but it's lovely to celebrate another 1974 floss tube baby and um, we wish you a very happy birthday Caroline so this was my start in honor of Caroline's 50th birthday it also fulfilled a couple of the viewer prompts that you sent in to us um, prompt number 55 was from Yasmin herself the designer of the chart and her suggestion was that we stitch something designed by her so this is strawberry season by yasmin's made with love and it also fulfills prompt number 772 which was by justine stitching and justine suggested that we stitch something designed by someone we have met so i was fortunate uh, and blessed to meet yaz at stitch in london last year in october and uh, it's really nice to know that I know <laughs> I have met the designer of this stitch. So that is strawberry season. And I was remiss and forgot to tell you, I'm sorry, it's a bit all over the show today. Um, 
I was remiss and forgot to tell you that Adore Him was started in honor of another 50th birthday. So here's Adore Him again, and I'll share that with you. So Adore Him was started in honor of Amy Wickhouse, who is a viewer here. And Amy is also a 1974 baby and her birthday is sometime in July. So very happy birthday to you, Amy. I hope it's a good year for you. Okay, let's uh, maybe try not to have to do so much back and forward, folks. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> So my next start, um, that was this week's start for the um, 50 challenges, is Silver Peak Sampler's My Christmas List. This one has been in my stash for quite some time and I'm very excited to have been able to get it out and start it. So I have made a start at the very top, as you can see. Let me pop that in behind Is that a bit better. So you can see that I have, I've stitched the whole top row as it were, um, and I have changed the car color to red. On the original, let me show you, it is blue. And I just fancied red much better. <laughs> so that's just a personal preference. I really enjoyed stitching this. I am looking forward to stitching more. It is with regret that I have to leave it aside to move on to some new starts, but I really like the idea of this stitch um, and stitching it, you know, one row at a time. I think it lends itself really nicely to being nicely paced is the way I would put it. So this is started on a 32 count um, Spygart linen called Silk. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful kind of um, creamy gray color. It's a it's really beautiful color. I love this silk linen. Um, and I've used this to fulfill prompt number 47, which was from Cynthia Veal. And Cynthia said that we should start something with a star on it. So in the chart, there are actually two stars. And I'm sorry, I just didn't get to them yet, Cynthia. <laughs> But one is, one is right here on the side of the um, reindeer as he's jumping. And then the other one is down here above the manger with the baby Jesus in. So, so although I haven't got to the stars, the chart does have stars in them. So that is another prompt ticked off. Thank you, Cynthia, for that suggestion. The, uh, in my plans, then I've got a couple of a couple more stitches, and um, they're also Christmas, so I, I'm doing nicely for the Christmas in July. So the next two starts that I have planned are this little kit, which is Alyssa is the the design the kit maker. It's Alyssa, and it's a Russian kit. I got this quite a number of years ago. Um, and it translates to say the dearest for you. So it's a little penguin giving a teddy and teddy bear exchanging Christmas presents. So I thought that this was um, a nice time to be able to make a start on this cutesy pattern. And then Sally and I will be starting Christmas ride together. And I'm just going to have a look here and remind myself of the date for that, sorry folks, um, the 22nd. So Sally and I are going to stitch this one together on the 22nd of July. And uh, it is Christmas Ride by Barbara Anna Designs. If you have Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher Magazine from Christmas 2020, you will have this pattern in there. It is also available, I believe, on Poppy Patch website if, if you like the look of it and would be interested in making a purchase. So I'm looking forward to those next couple of starts before I see you again. I think there's one other um, Barbara Anna Stitchingly Ever After, but I should be back to chat with you before I make a start on that one. So Sally and I have plans for our August stitching and in the middle of the preceding month that's when we like to share with you what's coming up so that you have a little bit of time if there's anything on our lists that interests you and you might like to join in with us to 
join in uh, with a start or to go and pick up something that you already have started um, and you can just share a few stitches with us in celebration of our birthday year. So for August I have got four new starts planned and starting on the 5th of August I'm going to stitch um, from the 2020 collector's heart pattern I'm going to stitch this little heart. So this is the small that comes I have already stitched the main pattern, the main chart, so I want to stitch this little, um, this little heart. I hope you can see it there. The, the pattern came with the fabric, so it's a really pretty fabric. I'm not sure what it is. Um, tango linen, I think, maybe, from Picture This Plus. So that's about a good colour of it there. It's got beautiful mottling on it. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna have a go and stitch that one. I'd love to be able to get that one finished. It's small, but sometimes small things are deceptive. I think it depends on how much color changing there is and that kind of thing. Um, it also helps when you don't have ear problems and you can concentrate. So we'll keep our fingers crossed for that to go away. <laughs> So that is, um, yeah, the 5th of August for that. Um, I'm going to just insert here a little slide of my plans for August. So sometimes I know some of you like to screenshot that and then you can go and rifle your own stash for whatever you might have to join in with us. So that's the 5th of August. On the 12th of August, please don't laugh, <laughs> but I plan to start Fancy and ABC from Modern Folk Embroidery. Yep, <laughs> it's a biggie. I absolutely adore this. I mean, this is just so stunning. It's been sitting in my folder for quite some time and I haven't had the nerve <laughs> to make a start on it. And there's a particular prompt that was laid down, <laughs> um, that this will fit perfectly and exactly, and I'll explain more at the time um, when I do make a start on it. But obviously I'm not gonna get very far um, and I'm not gonna make huge progress this year, but it's all part of the fun of starting, starting for 50. So that will be August the 12th, fancy an A, B, C, if you've already started it, or if you feel like joining in my madness, then then uh, hop over to the Modern Folk Embroidery website and download your pattern <laughs> or hunt out the one that you already have started. On the 22nd of August, Sally and I are going to do our monthly joint start. And for August, we have chosen the Blue Flowers Autumn Bee. And we both love this. so. I had it on my list and then recently Sally bought it. Um, she was able to get it from Talking Dog Stitchery and Sally bought it too. So then we decided that we would both stitch it. So I love the um, fabric that this is stitched on and I hope that Sally loves it too because purple is one of her favorite colors or, or her favorite color. Um, I got this, which I think is pretty perfect for it. Um, it's not the called for, but if you are interested and were wondering about a good fabric for the Autumn Bee, then this is a 32 count Lugana or Murano. I think in the UK we call 32 count Zweigart even weave is called Murano, but in the US Lugana seems to be the name for all of the, um, the 30 um, the, sorry, the 25 count and the 32 count, but it's it's Zweigart even weave. It's 32 count and it's called Antique Violet. And I was able to get this piece, um, a fat quarter pre-cut from Wool Warehouse in the UK. So woolwarehouse.co.uk. It's a beautiful color. It's going gray now, but, um, but it is very close to what's what you see on the cover of the pattern. So I love, love this pattern and always enjoy stitching uh, Janine McGowan's patterns. So looking forward to Autumn Bee with Sally on the 22nd. 
And then on the 26th, I am excited to be starting Flossibilities Autumn Pillow. You know that I've been collecting these pillow patterns. I haven't had an opportunity to start one yet, so I'm going to make an opportunity <laughs> at the end of August and get a start on um, the seasons with autumn. So I will have fun choosing fabric and floss for that. It's not it's not showing very well. There we go, that's slightly better. So I'm looking forward to making a start on that. I Do you like starting a series when you know that there's a series that you love? Are you excited to start the first one? So I'm really excited to start Lauren, um, the Flossibilities patterns from Lauren. So anyway, those are the plans. That is the look forward to the starts for August. The rest of my plans will be just <laughs> keeping up with that at the minute and um, yeah, just keeping um, keeping on with some of the sales. So North American Adventure Sal from Caterpillar Cross Stitch, a new part released this week and I need to get to that. I'm still trying to finish Do More of What You Love, which is beautiful, but I just haven't had the concentration for that. There's quite, it's quite detailed and it's quite a lot of counting and it's stunning. But as I said, my concentration levels were gone this week. Um, so anything harder than simple was just not happening. <laughs> so I've got those to keep up with and I have a few other bits and pieces I want to pull out again. Like I'd love to do a little bit more on light, the Barbara Anna piece we all started. Um, yeah, I just, I would love a month's holiday that involved only stitching and somebody bringing my meals to me. And then she woke up <laughs> and realized that's not real life. <laughs> anyway, wouldn't we all love that? Wouldn't we all? I'm very blessed to have what I do have and be able to stitch when I can. Um, so I don't, I don't take it for granted, folks. Please don't think that I do. Anyhow, that is all of my stitching and pretty much all of my plans. I wanted to share with you something that you can plan for yourself and join in yourself and that is the historical sampler company and their release of their advent calendar for 2024 and their release of the christmas sal 2024. now both of those the sal and the advent calendar are going up for pre-order this week on the 20th of july so that is six saturday um they will be on the Historical Sampler Company website for pre-order. There are no sneak peeks just yet. There's a little bit of information on the website, so I will link that page down below. Um, but the images that you're seeing today are not images of this year's calendar or this year's sal. They are images from previous years just to give you a flavour of the things they have done in the past. So they're, they're keeping it under wraps and it's very exciting. So I'm sure this week we'll start to see a little bit more um, in terms of sneak peeks and whatever coming up. So if you're interested, remember Saturday the 20th is the pre-order date. You can order the advent box by itself. You can order the sal by itself. You can order both together as far as I can see from the website. Um, the advent calendar itself will be a 24 um, 24 little boxes to open as we love with our advent calendars and um, and I think it's quite nice that they're putting this calendar out now because I know a lot of other calendars are already already sold out so if you haven't already got a calendar then this could be the one for you um, the historical sampler company calendar this year they are saying we'll have six mini projects in it and those mini projects will have everything you need they will have fabric floss and patterns and even some finishing items in them to make up the little projects that you have so they're going to include six of those across the um, across the 24 days they also then have a mixture of stitch items of gift items and a tasty treat in there um, so the 
This advent box is not purely stitch related items. So there may be uh, some days when you get a little like a tree ornament. I know if you if you look at the page that I've linked, the page that shows images from last year, there are some tree ornaments, some decor items in the box as well. So it's a really nice mix um, of stitching treats, um, of mini projects and some just some fun treats as well all beautiful quality i can speak to that i haven't had an advent box before but i do know and have seen what they've done in the past and i do know that it's the same standard and quality that they use on their subscription boxes and i was a subscription member for about for a year year and a half or so and um, and loved everything that they sent and the quality of it all was fantastic so i would have no hesitation in recommending that just be aware that it is um, a mixture of gifts and stitch related items and a mini project. So I think it's going to be lots of fun. I cannot tell you anything about the stitch along other than it starts in October. So you have a little bit of time. You're not, you're not signing up next week to start immediately. You've got a little bit of time before you have to start the sal. And I will be joining that one. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what it's going to be. As I said, no sneak peeks yet, but it's going to start in the middle of October and that gives us plenty of time to finish for Christmas. So details will be linked below if you are interested. Please go and have a little look at the historical sampler um, website for that information and keep your uh, eyes open on Saturday on social media this week. I'm quite sure they're going to be busy uh, promoting that. So. That is what I have to share with you um, today. I have uh, one final very special thing to share with you. Today is probably the most special of special things and I hope she won't mind me sharing her photograph that she posted um, on Instagram earlier this week. I think it was Thursday or Friday when this popped up and it was just the best news this week the absolute best. This is Lisa from Lost in Stitches. We haven't seen her for six or seven months now because she's been fighting. Um, she's been fighting to get herself well and she's been fighting through treatment and it's been a tough road. But look at her beautiful smiling face. I am so so pleased to see you back, Lisa. And it was wonderful. I'm sorry, I'm getting quite teary. And it was wonderful just to see you there on the Zoom call last night, chatting and being your beautiful effervescent self. So we're all gonna be so thrilled to see you back when you have time to record a floss tube. But of course the main priority is your health and your family. So take what time you need, but it was so, so good to see you and to see you looking so well last night and with your cute pixie haircut too. So Lisa, welcome back, sweetheart. We love you so much and we can't wait to hear more from you. I think it's really special that we have um, a community here that knows, uh, that we know each other and that we can share together and that we can support each other. We don't live side by side. We don't we don't communicate on a daily basis, but I do know that there is love and care and support in this community that we reach out to each other. We don't expect answers if someone is ill, or unwell or unable to, you know, to just make those connections back, but letting them know that they're thought of and loved um, during a tough time is really important. And I know that this community is really great at doing that so it's really special to be part of that and yeah Lisa we're so chuffed so so chuffed to see you back again sweetie um that is it for today I am going to dash off because um my little Charlotte is nine years old tomorrow and I have a birthday party to organize gifts to wrap food to make and I'm not very good at any of those things <laughs> any of those things so poor child um yeah is stuck with the bad party mom but <laughs> i need to get i need to get moving on <laughs> on all of it um and yeah i anyway i want to include here a little video that we did for you yesterday she wanted she wanted to do a jump 
and she <laughs> let me backtrack. We went for a walk in um, in a forest park at the foot of the Morns. Sleeve Donard is the highest mountain in the Morns, and at the foot of the mountain, there's a forest park with a very steep river trail. <laughs> so we walked part of the river trail and she was all about jumping off the rocks yesterday. So she wanted to do this jump for you guys. So I'm gonna leave you with this little clip of her jump and, um, and I hope that before I see you all again in a couple of weeks, you will all stay well and stitch happy. Love you all, bye. You can do it, just yeah. get gently one foot at a time. Help you get up. I hope you get up. Okay, no. Right. You say, hello plus two. Hello plus two. And jump. And up. Wow.